I'm going to tell you guys the top five causes of print failures for me that's got nothing to do with bed leveling. My name is Troy, this is Facility D20, we're always making cool stuff. Everyone talks about bed leveling and realistically it is the number one cause of failure in most cases. But there are other causes for failures that I have experienced and I wanted to share it with you all. So in no particular order, let's get into it. Number one, lift speeds. Basically, this is how fast the build plate moves upward between layer lines as it peels the latest layer of the print from the FET. If this is moving too fast, it creates more suction force and can cause the print to rip and pull from the supports. A lot of times you will end up with just printing a pile of supports but no model, or missing sections of a model, or layer splits in the model. Normally, these are the telltale signs with this issue. What I have done to resolve this is to decrease the factory default lift speeds by about 20%. I should also note that slightly increasing the exposure settings helps as well, especially if the supports are really tiny. Number two, seating the vat properly. Now, this may seem obvious, but there have been times during a busy day of printing here at Facility D20 when I have been rushing and I have not properly tightened down the set screws on the left and right side of the vat. Now, when this happens, as the build plate lifts, so does the entire vat and the prints do not peel from the FET properly, or at all. So always take a second and make sure you have the vat in the correct location and the screw down tight. Number three, FEP condition. As you may or may not know, over time, the condition of your FEP deteriorates with scratches, dents, and hazing. When this happens, light cannot properly penetrate to the build plate and lay down the next layer of the print. Unfortunately, the only way to fix this is to replace the FET, which is not as difficult as it sounds at all. However, if you are in a pinch and need to get that mini printed, you can always place the mini in a location on the build plate away from the damaged section of the FET. Number four, continuing with FEP issues and out of tune FET. If that transparent screen is too tight or too loose, it will not have the proper flex to allow the newest layer to be peeled correctly. However, the FEP can be easily tightened or loosened using the set screws on the underside of the vat. However, the film needs to be tuned like a drum set and not just randomly adjusted. At first, this was an intimidating task for me, or so I thought, until I downloaded an app called Spectrum Analyzer on my phone and I was able to easily measure the frequency of the FEP by tapping it like a drum and adjusting accordingly. It was very easy to do, so don't be intimidated. Here at Facility D20, we are always 3D printing miniatures, painting and airbrushing, and just making cool stuff from wargaming miniatures and terrain to custom dioramas and other fun projects. So go ahead and join the facility by smashing that subscribe button. Number five, underfilling the vat. Yes, this is an easy one, and yes, this has gotten me a few times. Not because I didn't fill the vat enough, in fact, I always fill it to the max. However, I have printed some models that were so huge that it used up all the resin and it ran dry mid-print. So if you are printing these huge prints, make sure you go in after the print has started, preferably once the print progresses to the point where the entire build plate is no longer submerged into the vat and refill that damn thing. I have one more bonus issue to discuss right after we take a look at the sponsor of this video. So stick around for that one, it's a tricky one. X-Terrain specializes in 3D modeling and creates amazing SEO files useful for all your miniature games, from wargaming and board games to RPGs and even dioramas. You can head on over to My Mini Factory right now and check out their X-Terrain Unleashed series that is perfect for all your sci-fi, cyberpunk, and post-apocalyptic games. All their pieces are 100% support free for FDM printers and no post-processing is required. You can also sign up for their newsletter and stay up to date on all the latest action from x -Terrain. Follow the links in the description for more details. So here we go, the bonus issue. Damaged or burrs on the build plate. If you are a little rough on your build plate like I have been, you can easily damage the thing and leave behind scratches that cause a little bit of metal to stick up and not allow your build plate to sit flat on the printer and can even prevent you from leveling it properly. I have discovered this issue before when no matter what I did when I was leveling, the paper seemed to always pinch in one area because there was a little chip of metal sticking up. What I did to resolve this is from time to time give the build plate a little light sanding. 
If you found any of this helpful, make sure to hit that like button. Also, I need to take a second here and thank the members of my Patreon. Candace, Don, Rob, Michael, and Glenda. You guys are awesome and have helped me progress this channel more than you will ever know. The link to my Patreon is in the description below if you want to check it out. Also, please stick around and check out some awesome videos on my channel like these.